Good evening, everyone. Richard Coverthwaite for Northwest Access TV. Thanks for joining us for another For the Record St. Albans Today show, a monthly show. It is the first Wednesday in October, Wednesday, October 3rd. Happy to have two guests representing St. Albans Town and St. Albans City. Ned Connell, the St. Albans Town Director of Administration. And Ned, you can tell us during the show the, of what that entails, the many hats that that entails. And Mayor Tim Smith with the city, no stranger to wearing a bunch of hats, but uh, good to see the mayor. Good to see you guys. Anyway, where to, where to start? Here we are in October, made it through October, finally getting some rain. That's probably, uh, boy, it's certainly good news for some dairy farmers around here and probably a lot of other folks uh, after a dry summer. Tim, I noted in the recent uh, St. Albans Co-op newsletter, just a reference to some farmers having understandably tough times with uh, dry, dry drought-like conditions over the summer. Very appreciative of the city, I guess, coming through with uh, supplying water to some of those folks. Uh, had good words for the city and the fire department. Yeah, I'm not sure how many the city actually helped out, but I yeah. knew that was was something that um, they were able to assist with, which... Yeah, I guess in the city itself, with municipal water, presumably dry light conditions don't affect the city particularly? Yeah, no, no. well, uh, the, I know the reservoir in Fairfax, well, that's the, really, the lower one is, is really dry. It's, it's really dry, yeah. it's, um, a, it's painful to look at. But I think it's, it speaks volumes as to the, um, the preparation for, for strong infrastructure. You know, you've got two, two drawing points, one being Macomb yeah. Shore and one being the reservoir in Fairfax, yeah. and that you have uh, you know, you have redundancy to, to assist when times like this are. Yeah, as low as the lake is, and the lake's still about 94 feet above sea level. Uh, it's walked, in the 93 range yeah, now. Nine, yeah, it's, or it's high 93. Long. I think yeah. the rain might have kicked it up slightly, but yeah, just on well, Saturday, I walked, from, uh, I walked about halfway from Kilkir to Mosquito Island. Oh, and, really? And, and, and believe me, you wouldn't need uh, significant boots to walk the rest of the way probably another six inches over the rest of the sandbar. Because uh, two years ago, you literally could walk oh out yeah. there, and but it's close now. Frankly, I was swimming in the lake on uh, Sunday afternoon oh yeah. Oh yeah. off of Kilcare, yeah. and uh, I had to make sure over near the uh, boat where the uh, ferry lands and the boat ramps, yeah. uh, I really wasn't paying attention. I was just sort of swimming back and forth, yeah. and I have slammed my hand into some of those uh, shoals a couple really, of times. and. Really. And it was one of those things where I was just sort of aimlessly swimming yeah. along and having some fun. And uh, I got a couple of nasty cuts from the shells yeah. on those things. And just I'm, I'm impressed you're swimming. So you made it just about into October, huh? Is uh, more actually, swimming to come? Not, knock wood, I'll be out there again on Sunday afternoon. Well, really? Yeah, good for wet you. Wet suit, it's, it's actually not bad. So with a wet, with a wet suit? Wet, wet suit, oh, and really? I have a, a neoprene hat that I wear. Yeah, that, that's impressive. I don't, I don't mean to challenge you, Ned, <laughs> but uh, two or three years ago when we had that 60 or 70 degree uh, Christmas Eve day, I think it yeah. was. Yeah, a um, few years ago. We took all my kids down. They went swimming. Did, did they? On, oh. did they, yeah, really? they? They jumped in, yeah. Really? And, and some of the neighborhood kids. So, Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so that's, that's our record late date wow. for uh, swimming in the lake. Yeah, well, that, hopefully no impressive. more 60s in December, but, but I'll ex I accept <laughs> I your challenge. I will try to get in the lake every month this that's year. impressive, yeah. But the best I can report is uh, when Champlain Country Club used to not kind of officially close, which oh. they now do, there's a year or two that we managed to get in some golf every every month of a of a fairly long ago mild winter. Yeah. So what about the town with the with the dry conditions? Did you well, hear about many any problems with that? We've had a few problems, but really the uh, the thing it's been somewhat beneficial. I have to say somewhat. Yeah. Farmers, yes, they've had some problems. Yes, we've heard yeah. of some issues and some a couple of town uh, not town but personal wells going bad. Yeah. But the uh, the thing that we've noticed is that the uh, the algae blooms in the lake yeah. were, have been dramatically reduced. Okay. So that's just not much, not much water coming into the lake, I guess. Yeah, obviously. not much in, and well, most of the phosphorus and much of the food that the algae feeds on yeah. is from erosion from uh, you know the Jewett Brook or uh, Stevens Brook. Yeah. So no rain means no erosion means no food means that they're you know st they're stressed. Which is a good thing. Interesting. So it's one one good thing about a dry summer, I guess. Huh? Yeah, it it's good, but I you know it's one of those goods that's like you know I'd rather have a good in a different direction and yeah. have the, a real permanent solution so that regardless of the water flow and the rainfall, that we can deal with the algal blooms based on us controlling our stormwater flows into the lake rather than yeah. just you know God bringing us less rain. Yeah, sounds like that's a big issue for you. Again, I, we had our annual meeting here Monday night. 
Denise, uh, Tim's wife was here, and who do, who do I see when I went over to the State of the Lake meeting? Denise made it over there before I did, and of course, Ned, you were there. I was there, so We yes. talked off air a little bit. Anything jumping out? Uh, again, just seems like there's just not a lot of uh, some organizations like Lake Champlain Basin Program apparently getting some more money. Yeah. But boy, it, it just seems like there's still, you don't hear a ton of optimism, but again, I, I miss kind of the guts of the I, meeting. I think they're optimistic, yeah. and, and certainly the lake is Slowly, very, very slowly. Yeah. The, the graphs all show a slow improvement. Yeah, now, that's the, good. The improvement might be one or two percent a year, so it's yeah. going to be a long time. However, yeah. the uh, the real key thing is implementing the city and the town put together a what they call flow restoration plans for both Stevens and Jewett Brooks. Yeah. And it'd be great to get some more construction money to actually start implementing the features in that because uh, we need we have twenty years to get them in. We're about year 17 into the 20s, so we've got to get things up and rolling. But the real issue is, is that there's no money to do the construction. Now, the city and the town are both, I'll put words in Tim's mouth, I hope he doesn't mind, are willing to share in these things, to construct these things. This is part of the, the MS4 issue? It, yes, right. How, but, but we both together have about $10 million to get out over the oh. next 20 years or so, wow. including inflation and some other factors. But yeah. It's going to be tough to get there, with, whether we're setting up stormwater utilities like the city is just in the process of doing. The town is certainly considering that at this point also. But it's a big, uh, big nut to bear, and uh, it's going to be tough to get through this. And, you know, we need some help from the state and the feds. And certainly uh, Congressman Walsh and uh, Congressman Stefanik have helped the, Lake, yeah. have helped the, uh, the Lake Champlain Basin program yeah. with some extra money. I'd like to see some of that money get into construction to actually start moving some dirt and start rebuilding some of these uh, stormwater detention ponds. Here you go. Tim, last, last meeting again, they've got the, um, the city release on the uh, stormwater utility fee. Yeah. We got, I forget, did we get into that last meeting? I forget if I had seen that in time. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe we talked about it. There, there yeah. may have been some, some discussion on the MS4, but not specifically okay. to this So again, extent. this is uh, city residents getting on uh, for the first time, you may be seeing a stormwater utility fee on your St. Albans water and sewer bill. In May and June of 2018, the City Council created a stormwater utility and adopted a budget to take effect on July 1st that will be charging for the first five months of the year. So again, that's kind of addressing, kind of starting to address this issue and starting to create bucks for it. Yeah, starting to create a fund to, you know, to Ned's yeah. point of um, trying to get some of these construction projects done, implementation yeah. projects to, to, um, hopefully have an impact, an, an, an additional impact uh, on the lake, good, good impact, I should say, on the lake. And, um, you know, I think, I think the city did a pretty good job of sort of uh, laying the groundwork. I, I, think this, I don't think this was a surprise to many people. It was in the paper many times. And mm. so I think, um, and the fee, is, the fee is modest, I think. Um, I think my home was $12, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, Chip Sawyer and I spoke to um, Jeff Moulton's history class at BFA mm -hmm. last week for three different classes, and their their discussion was on progress, the impacts of progress. And, you know, I was I was quick to say that, you know, 45 years ago when Franklin County Industrial Development was, was established and we started bringing in manufacturers and, and there was construction of larger buildings and parking lots and all that, um, we had, as far as I know, there was a whole lot of knowledge of what the impacts of uh, stormwater runoff would be on on the lake or the river. Nobody probably talked. No, no one, one would thought. Be, why would that be an issue? Yeah, no one thought twice about it. I don't know that people realize that mm -hmm. runoff in the city made it all the way to the lake. Yeah. I think they may have been naive to that. Mm -hmm. So that was a that was a negative relative to progress. But I think uh, obviously we've changed our ways and we are focused on. Uh, doing implementation projects, like Ned said, working together and trying to resolve this, uh, not this year or next year, but over the next 20, 25 years. Ned, is the town, again, the city's stormwater utility fee, is the town pondering or doing a similar thing? Or? We're, we're kicking it around, I can yeah. say, at this point. It's, it's huh. I mean, our reason for kicking around, I think, is similar to why the city and most other towns do the utility, is yeah. if you use, you know, even if you're leveraging town funds or leveraging city funds to to match federal or state funds, 
you're still going to have sort of an up or down roller coaster with your uh, general uh, your general budget numbers and your tax rates. Yeah. So if you separate this out and put it into a utility, you have a set fund that deals with it itself, so that you take it off of off or indirectly off the grand list burden and put it onto itself. So it it ends up being a little bit better. But yeah, we're kicking it around. I know. New taxes and fees are not popular anywhere these days. Don't seem to be. Yeah, it's, but <laughs> it's one of those things where we've promised we were going to do these things. We need to get them done. Certainly, we can leave them like some other cities and towns are sort of leaving them to the last second. Yeah. But that's going to be a big burden at one point. So if we just do it bit by bit, the city and town can get through it with, you know, three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff mm. on an annual basis or spread over those years. So it's Sounds like a lot. Yeah, it's going to be annoying, but it's not so big a burden that it's going to, you know, kill us. You mentioned at least a hope for tapping some state and federal funds. Is there any any guarantee? Is the state guaranteed just some bucks? I, something tells me the feds probably haven't, but no, the feds indirectly have. It just really? got to get all the way down to us at this yeah. point. The state, I think, the state's made a reasonable effort at it so far. Yeah. They just need to go through a couple more legislative cycles. In, in, at least in my opinion, yeah. so the legislators understand the full breadth of the problem, understand the full costs of the problems, and have some experience with projects getting going through the, the original process and getting completed so that all the little bumps and bruises that you see along the way are sort of defined and you can sort of eliminate them and then come up with a fully financed package. Certainly, uh, Treasurer Pierce came up with the, uh, I think it was uh, 25 million last year, mm -hmm. I think that's a good ballpark figure. I think that seems in the right order magnitude, whether it's up a million or down a million. And the 25 mil specifically for? For stormwater implementation okay. of the stormwater, of the okay. MS4 things spread okay. out throughout the state. Yeah, interesting. Can Boy, big, in. big issue. Can I just jump in on that a little yeah. bit, Richard? Um, you know, I, I, was a, I was a board member of Friends of Northern Lake Champlain, and then uh, I got off when Denise, my wife, became the, the exactly. director. Right. And so I'm pretty well versed on the, the challenges of these nonprofits that are focused on lake or water quality. Yeah. Um, and I have always been a firm believer that uh, uh, the, the time spent, and there's the example I will share, the one event coming up is this Sunday at Georgia Beach. Run, run for the lake. Run for the lake, yeah. which is uh, put on by the Friends of Northern Lake Champlain. And you know, they're spending 75% of their time fundraising. Mm. I think, uh, and I'm not sure if, if t Ned's been on any of their uh, tours, but they they have had, I think, uh, substantial success in implementing projects that help mm. have an impact on the water quality. And that's, of course, the criticism, the you know, kind of casual criticism one hears so often, hey, we're spending all this money, show me some progress. You know, all this money goes into studies, we never see exactly. anything. but. Sounds and, like they've got some visible stuff to show. Yeah, and I think that there's there's many projects that they've done that have been successful. And the argument that I've made over the years, and I've made this to Deb Markowitz when she was the secretary of ANR, is that you know the ANR budget is I don't know what it is, 250 million or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, <clears throat> throw throw 75,000 at you know the Missisquoi Bay. Yeah. Uh, or the basin organization, or the Friends of Northern Lake Champlain. San area watershed. Area, yeah. you know, Sounds very well. Just you know, yeah. let them let them focus on implementation and not yeah. fundraising. Yeah. And you know, the even if you gave seventy five to each of them, that's two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. That's a drop in the bucket. Yeah. You know, for for A and R. Yet she she did Sounds not like see the value idea. in it. But yeah. um, we continue to push that because. They're spending all their time fundraising. It's it's yeah. it's not what they're meant to do. Meanwhile, yeah, well, the state continues to be criticized. Unless I missed it, still no dedicated funding source for this kind of the overall mm -hmm. lake water quality issue. It, a huge issue, but uh, again, classic kicking the can down yeah. the road to, well, for the next session or whatever. It's kicking the can, but it's even worse than that. It's yeah. just using sort of found <laughs> money with yeah. no sort of stability to the longevity of that yeah. money, so that it's found now. I'm you know, knocking wood every late fall that, um, yes, it'll be found again next legislative session. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those costs that we, we have to bear. The lake is a great asset. It's something that nobody else in New England has other than a, you know, a couple of few, few and far between areas. Um, and you know, we've got it, and 
it, it's not like it's going someplace else. We just need <laughs> to implement the stormwater so that the quality of the lake goes from where it is now, which is eh, mediocre sometimes and good other times, yeah. to good all the time so that people start coming to up here and staying here and, and vacationing here. Yeah. Speaking of the bay, how did the, uh, again, the St. Albans Bay Marina, a decent first year for those folks, I, would you say? I, I, I don't have any inside information. Yeah. I wish I did. Yeah. I, I don't have a boat, <laughs> yeah. at least not anymore. And, uh, but looking out my window, it seemed like it was pretty full. Yeah. Uh, from what I've heard from people, <clears throat> they were pretty full, and it, it did pretty well. Yeah. Tim, was that your sense also? I think they yeah. got off to a decent start. Got off to a late start, which late impacted start. them a little bit. Yeah. But uh, you know, I was just speaking to a boat owner who historically has uh, docked their boat over in uh, Keeler Bay or one of those in the islands, yeah. and traveled. You know, it's forty minutes, yeah. and I, I've never quite understood that. I mean, you, conditions can can change drastic, drastically in your 40, 40 minute ride over to the boat, and then you end up coming home again. But with it being here in the bay, they can shoot down, they can just hang out on the boat, uh, not necessarily take it out, but they they uh, moved their boat to the marina this year and they loved it. And they have been a, a large advocate for other boat owners to encourage them to, to move into the yeah. into the marina. And I think, I think next year you'll see a much more uh, uh, participation in, in that. With a full season. In the full season, early yeah. Season. yeah. Yeah, and I also think that they're, that, that now that it's gone through that for right. the first cycle, yeah. I have a feeling that, that by Christmas time, sometime after that in the midwinter, I would assume that they're going to be damn yeah. near full and yeah. that, that spots will be hard hard to come by. And, and the one and thing that I've noticed, I, I live in the Bay Area. So you're right, you live down there too. I, and I ride my bike through there all the wow. time and certainly I've said I've swim there. Uh, the Bayside Pavilion has been pretty full over the Looks summer. Like a, Someone yeah. else said that too. Yeah, not, not to mention the creamy stand across the yeah. street. Uh, yeah. The cre yeah. Yeah. No, the Bay's been a pretty busy, busy place. And, and as Tim said, that, that forty, you know, that traveling to your boat is money that's just traveling away. Yeah. It's going someplace else. It's potentially going yeah. into a completely different and state or a different country. And kudos to you guys. I'm in the in the Bay Park a couple times a week. One of my part time jobs. A kid I'm with loves loves being in there. But you know the walking path and stuff. So certainly the Bay Park is getting a fair amount of use, obviously, for the big event. Of course, Farmer's yeah. Market this summer. I guess the last one was, what, last Wednesday, oh, I guess? Oh, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, the, the incredible thing is that um, the, pa the paved path around the park, we yeah. sort of paved, <clears throat> I don't want to say it was on a lark, but it was one of those things where we had some yeah. money and we put some money towards it and yeah. thought, we just got to improve it because the path was in poor condition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last winter, a couple of times, the DPW guys you know, went over to plow it and it, they literally almost didn't have to plow it because just with all the foot, the, the foot, foot traffic, traffic on had it. literally pounded the snow yeah. flat. And this was what I've been relating a story, you know, a secondhand story. Um, they had gone over to plow it at before dawn. It was still dark, and really? there was a substantial really? number of footprints on there. That's impressive. And it was it was a big storm that night. You know, more than just several inches. Yeah. So that. That was a lot of use in the middle of a snowstorm with wind and the dark. That's good. You just made me think of something. Will you take, will it, will you take another shot? Will the PW folks take another shot at a skating rink? I know that was, a, that was a, just didn't go too well last winter, but will, will Alan Mash here and company take another shot at that, do you think, this winter? I, I, I think hope we, so. I, I hope so also. Yeah. Uh, I, weather, weather wasn't... What, uh, yeah, the weather... Uh, actually, probably a couple of the weather days that we, we could have Mm -hmm. that the skating rink was there, we actually could have put on our wetsuits and gone for a swim <laughs> because that was part of the problem is yeah. that the, uh, it just melted away a couple of times and it just, it becomes just cost burden to sort of pump out the water, let it freeze. And, well, great, you know. great idea. I hope, I hope they take another shot at it. I, well, we outdoor, can, I grew up in Massachusetts. I mean, outdoor skate pond skating was my life for yeah. first, you know, a bunch of years of my life. It, it well, It'd be great if we could get permission to, or if, and if it was safe enough for the ice to freeze on the lake a little bit earlier and get the lake to have some skating on it, but that's... Which I do venture on one, yeah, one, once in a while we get some decent skating yeah. conditions, but that's obviously that's not going to be for every, not everybody. Every year. But the, uh, but the... Elaborate on permission. What, what do you mean? Uh, well, I wasn't it, familiar it, with that. Per, there, we'd like to... It, it'd be great to put out buoys, but because technically it's a navigable waterway, so that you could start marking out stuff, you need to get the permission of the Coast Guard, and they can't 
inflict with shipping and navigation and things like that, hmm. but also um, to a certain extent, uh, plowing and moving equipment, uh, public equipment onto the lake, at least in my opinion, would probably be uninsurable. Sure, yes, yeah. yeah. on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so. You don't want to and, lose something. And that's, uh, yeah, and that's one of the things that the, a lot of the snowmobile groups have come across is now, they used to hmm. cut across frozen ponds and rivers. Now everything is bridged so that there's no more or very limited travel on ice. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's, it's problematic. And certainly sitting in my office, some of the bob houses go out Early, or I, I'm hoping they have flotation underneath them yeah. because some of them go out a little bit earlier than I would have said was sufficient ice. But last winter, we had we had good ice. We had a, almost a foot. Yeah, just um, love to hear from folks out there. Again, this is a live show. At least if you're watching us live right now, five two eight five three one five is our number. Feel free to give us a call. Speaking of public works, uh, definitely moving on a March vote on moving the town public works garage to the I, Brigham Road. As that looks like, that's pretty. I, Pretty I, likely, strongly likely? I think it's fairly likely. Yeah. I, I also want to just mention indirectly is that, no, somebody did not dress both Tim and I. We're both wearing basically <laughs> the same pattern shirt, and no, we, we dress separately, but we have both have obviously very good taste. Looking good, looking good. But, yeah, but good, yes, good, the fall, DP, good fall look to you guys. The, um, the DPW does look like it's going to go through March vote, and it, yeah. it is moving forward, but there's still a pile of things to dig to through and you know but i guess the, the good news certainly from a taxpayer point of view it looks like there may be little or no uh hit for taxpayers with the the buckos you have in the local option sales tax fund it does look that way fund. so far yes that'd be that'd be nice that might, uh, that might help you get a get approval which of course you didn't didn't get last time i yeah i not not good this time we get approvals yeah. all the way through because it's the the, the dpw property is on the lake it's valuable property, and yeah. it, it's got better uses than a DPW garage. It's just, we need to... That's know. had that use for how, how, how oh. that dates to, I'm talking a long time? A long time. I, I, oh. I've heard 50s and 60s, so it's, it's you know, maybe even 70s. Yeah, I've been around but, for a while, but now it's a long yeah, time. It's been a long time, and it's just, it's good, valuable property that's being poorly utilized as a yeah. DPW garage. It's yeah. three or four acres, I forget the exact... Volume that weird. could be used as a you know a, a another boat launch another like like a sailing center something to complement yeah. the marina something yeah. to be a better use of the property. Frankly, even I, I know we don't really want to sell it, or at least I think that's what the town fathers are leaning towards. Yeah. So it's good valuable property. Just another use for it, it would be more appropriate. I know you did the town did some engineering on the bay dock. That certainly comes up on the show. Uh, yes. Again, any any game plan? I guess the thought was to right, raise it a couple of feet, ideally. Or yeah, there was that. It just the price tag came in at a, right. just a, a astronomical a, price yeah, tag. You know, and so uh, yeah. once we get through some of the other, it, you know, the the bay dock is a nice additional thing to have and a yeah. great feature to have in the yeah. town and in the bay. Yeah. It's just we have more pressing needs to. And it's put. still usable. I go, I walk out there. You know, it's you know, it's still a usable yeah. place. But, but is but that right? So the price tag definitely yeah, threw the, you off a bit. The, well, the price tag would have thrown anyone off. It yeah. came into the into the. I forget exactly what it was, but it was in the order of magnitude of millions of dollars. Was it, it's just was like, it really? Yeah, really? that's that's a that's a that's a pinch. Yeah. I guess um, my I, I think there's um, a poor signage on the bridge that uh, it should be improved. To prevent cars from going off the end of it, I think that's. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that of course didn't. It did happen. Yeah. They usually, they usually have some big boulders here. Well, there, there's a, actually there's a curb yeah. at the end, and I don't. I wish I had now seen it, but that. hit. I, I don't know if it no. flipped that way or no, what. Just sort of maybe maybe over. Over. But, but they, to, to get over that mind. would have been yeah. quite a. Well, there's a there's a bit of, there was a bit of damage out there, but yeah. it's. It's not impossible to go off the yeah. dock, and, uh, <laughs> and we would prefer people sure don't do say. that. Yeah, um, and I know you did some work on the seawall. That classic was that more civilian conservation corps work along with the bathhouse. Uh, but I know there was some work done on that a couple of years ago. That was before my time, and I before believe your that time. yeah, that was just to repair what was there. Just and so, yeah. yeah, so we we, we got the uh, went yeah. to the coast guard and, and got the various permits and got it done. Yeah. And we are looking at in another thing that's on our list of things to do in the future is rebuilding the stone, stone house. Right. Uh, and it, but it's uh, and that one, huh. it's, 
we get a lot of, of requests to use it, but it's just inadequate at this yeah. point because the power is not that good and the bathrooms are yeah. inadequate at this point. Yeah. But uh, it's, a, it's another one of those great attributes that we just need to slowly you know, nip away at it and build, right. build, you know, do the important things and then build to the other things also. Right. Tim, speaking of public works, hard not to jump back into kind of a surprising situation with the city public works department situation. Again, the, the search for a successor um, to succeed Alan Rob Toy stepping down recently after, what, 40 years uh, with the city. And I guess Matt Mulherin was hired. And again, just didn't last too long, decided pretty quickly he was uh, more comfortable going back to his uh, post as what, deputy city fire chief. Yeah, assistant so just not a, assistant fire chief. Just not a good fit or again, kind of a surprising oh, development. Uh, I, I don't know about, uh, I think it was a good fit. Yeah, I mean, Matt, so. Matt had uh, extensive knowledge. Uh, you know, he covered public works when Alan was out oh, with really? his heart wow. issues years ago. Huh. He's certified, you know, the, the position was going to entail oversight of the water wastewater plant as well as the water plant. So he sounded like, well, I mean, and very had, well qualified. And he was, he was certified water plant operator. Right. So, I mean, he had, he had two of the three uh, pieces nailed pretty well. Hmm. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Matt. Uh, we talked some other city business, but not specifically about his decision. Yeah. But um, I thought Matt would um, would follow up and with the way Alan treated people. I think Matt was very, re you know, because I've, I've been involved with some of the public <coughs> health and safety ordinances, and yeah. Matt's been involved with reaching out to homeowners to try to correct issues. I think he's been very respectful and has has worked hard to to um, correct those issues and um, making the individuals, um, you know, happy with the interaction. So mm -hmm. I think he would have done a good job. I, I'm not sure what the concerns were. Whether it's, um, you know, he, he's getting called out anyways on fire, and he, you know, the yeah. public works is the same. But I, I don't know what the. But in any case, was. he decided to do uh, whatever and, and went back to his. I went back. He's back to the fire department, um, overseeing that day-to-day um, -day operations. You know, Gary is uh, as chief is more um, administrative piece of it, um, but Matt is the boots he on the ground. He certainly has spent a few hours a week on the police department. I suspect right. too. Yeah. No. So. Um, yeah. So Marty Manahan has jumped in as uh, what in, as interim just director. Just. Um, you know, make sure the uh, the things that need to be done. Yeah. You know, whether it's a down tree or whatever the case is, Marty's just coordinating with the yeah. public works crew to make sure that everyone's on the same page and we're moving forward. So it's a short-term fix right now. You know, Marty has many things on his plate. Yeah, Marty's got a few few hats he wears, I think, also. Huh? So it's it's not, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be a long-term mm -hmm. fix by any means, but. Um, uh, we have a council meeting on uh, Monday night, so I'm sure we'll get the update from Dom as to uh, what So Dominic uh, Cloud, the city manager, presumably as we speak, I mean, looking looking for another director of public oh, yeah, works. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're looking at not, not only a, a, a director from that perspective, but also did we have the right model in terms of mm -hmm. the right, you know, do we have the, do we want pers a person engaged with all of that? Or is it more of a, you know, city hall position? Um, I think the consensus mm. is we want someone engaged. Yeah, you know, someone DPW that, director that, is one of those makes sense. incredibly like a, exhausting. I mean, every, and, every day it's got to be stuff going yeah. on. Yeah, it's it, I, in dealing with Alan Mashta, DPW right. director for the town. Right. Formerly, were, formerly with the, the city, city DPW. Uh, there's a lot of days he's in the office and he just looks exhausted. Yeah, and no, you can just know that he's been up late plowing or yeah. doing stuff. And it's just, it's one of those jobs where it's, it's exhausting and it's difficult but you need to get exactly the, it's, it's like threading the needle. You gotta get exactly the right fit because getting the right fit, everything seems to happen by right. magic. Right. Yeah. It, and if you have the wrong fit, and it just never works right. Yeah. And we, we've talked about uh, Alan on this show with Carrie or Bill um, yeah. in that um, pr from an outsider looking in, I've been impressed with his initiative. I mean, it's Alan who started the farmer's market. It's Alan that's done yeah. a lot of the park work. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, He's been engaged in like a couple of things that can't yeah. come to my mind, but he's been engaged in a number of things throughout the community. And yeah. um, 
or the ice rink and Bay oh, right, Day, and, you know, and, yeah. and the, oh, a whole bunch yeah, of other things. He's, he's involved in, yeah. you know, everything and various beautifications along with yeah. paving and stormwater yeah. and mowing the sides of the roads and, you know, sure and, and fixing like a job the pump you, station, you know. The, yeah, no, it sounds yeah. like a job where one sure sounds like needs to be out and about. Oh, in the town, he's doing the tra trail work in the town forest also. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. oh, is that right? The guy's everywhere. Oh. Yeah, and he's very engaged. Yeah. He lives in the community. It's great to see yeah. that piece yeah. of it. So, so is that that's a that's a city manager appointment, Tim, for the new public works yes, director is, with yeah. council approval or not even the with council, council approval. approval? Exactly. So, so obviously, we'll hoping to nail that down in the maybe this month or you yeah, know, and better then, handled uh, Monday night. Uh, you know, the initial thought was who who was a second choice. Yeah, you know, was a second choice someone, and I. Dom was of the belief, and the and the uh, interviewing committees were of the belief that they, the second, third, fourth, whoever, just weren't at the same level as Matt was, mm. um, and we probably wouldn't um, we wouldn't go back that way. We would start over and, and start the process and see what else, yeah. see what new applicants we got in. Mm. So well, I guess better to happen in kind of late summer, early I fall, know. than like mid <laughs> yeah. mid winter anyway. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully, got a little little time before and the snow the, starts flying. The ace in our back pocket is, I mean, Allen's still around. Yeah. So right. if, if if it was at a time where we had the a major water break, you know, Allen has um, yeah. been engaged all along and would would continue to be. Um, so we're we're fortunate from that perspective. Yeah, good point. Anything coming up with the city at, at the March uh, annual city meeting, Tim? Like the town moving, presumably on the. Uh, Moving the public works garage, any major kind of non-regular issues that you're looking at, or no? I think I think uh, what was passed in um, in November was the key. That that was the downtown block. Yeah. Um, probably won't see any activity with that uh, this fall. It's getting a little late, and uh, still a lot of uh, conversations need to be had. Um, you know, and, and we've looked at uh, the city pool. Status. And yeah, that, right. That's one that. Any uh, any decision on that? No, on the city pool? no. That still has. Once again, that would be something that would happen. Uh, we'd get through next summer and. How crowded was it this winter and this summer? Yeah, no, no, um, you know, I heard um, five thousand people went through there in the wow in the summer. Still a pretty popular place. Yeah. Still popular. So you can, of course, I'm talking to the former San Albans City Recreation Director right here. Can you just not imagine the city not having a? Municipal swimming pool is that hard for you to imagine? Yeah, I, I, I mean I've seen what it's done for my kids. Yeah, um, you know my kids swim better than I do. Uh, I mean they are, and we're you know we're they're young. The comfort around the water is huge. Yeah. Uh, I the think staff's the, been great. It's really staff's enough. been great. Uh, you know the the um, experience that they get from swim lessons, swim team, just general swim yeah. is uh, is huge. Um, and you know whether this is coincidence or not, but we when I don't know that we've had any situation in the last 50 years where there's a ch child that's drowned in St. Albans or Franklin County. Yeah. You know I don't I don't know of any. Whether that ties back to all the lessons that they do at the pool yeah. and and the and the uh, swim team. Yeah, that's um, a good point. You know it's it's um, I think it's a valuable tool. Um, We've had I've had conversations with Dominic even before I was mayor that you know we need if we want to draw families to St Albans yeah. we want to we need to give people a reason to move to St Albans yeah. you know if, there's hundreds of cities that have no infrastructure yeah. and you just want to move and you go to school and that's it yeah. I think St Albans is focused on between what Ned is involved with but bike paths and getting a path up to the complex and. Yeah. And the rail trail, and and even a walking path out to um, to Walmart, and mm. I mean, all, those are all reasons that people. I mean, I noticed that. I, I think I shared with you, Richard. I was in Boulder, Colorado, this summer with the family, right. and there was a walking wow. path everywhere you went. There was a walking or a bike path. Yeah. You didn't have to go on the street at all. You you there was underpasses. You could go wherever you wanted. Yeah, that's great. Um, and and that just for me. Just speaks of community. I mean, that's I hear you. When I'm on the road, I just when I when I see stuff like that, I'm always looking for that. I'm yeah. lucky enough to go to Martha's Vineyard for a long summer weekend, and again, bike paths, walking paths, all over the place. But that's one of the Tim's bringing up a key point is um, all all of the cities and towns that we're competing against, yeah. whether it's in Canada or the United yeah. States or anywhere in the world, yeah. 
they all have water and sewer. They all have three-phase yeah. power. They all have broadband connectivity. Yeah. It's the little amenities, yeah. the little niceties that oh. you add on there that always, you know, when you're expending money, always look a, a tad superfluous. Like, yeah. how many bike paths do we need? How many, you know, city pools or things like that? But those are the things that draw people to your communities yeah. because, you know, I've been involved with various economic development people and, you know, I, I, they always say, well, what can you do for us? Well, I point out that my office window and say, mm. we have a lake, yeah. we have the marina, we have all these other things, we have amenities, and well, so and so's getting to give us a tax break. Well, good luck there. Yeah. And that, you know, I, it, it's a little bit flippant to say them good luck, yeah. but we have, with the amenities that we're, we have and the amenities that we're planning on, it's a bigger draw. It's a, you're, you're more competitive in the market. Just giving mm. somebody a tax break. That's nice, but when the tax break's over, you can sort of plan that they're going to be up and out to yeah. someplace yeah, else. The, you know, I always envision myself driving into a, when, as I drive around St. Albans, that that would be my first time driving into the community. Yeah. And, and, and when, every time I go by the Bay Park, yeah. you know, if I'm driving by, I'm thinking if someone just came upon this, they would say, geez, look at this. It's right a on sweet the, place. It's really. a sweet place. Same with Taylor Park. You pull into town, you go down Main Street, and you're yeah. like, Look at this, I've never, and I've had many people tell me, I, I didn't realize St. Albans was so nice. And, yeah. You know, we yeah. had, we had fam, I spoke to a family from New Jersey this summer that ended up staying in St. Albans because of the hotel was cheaper yeah. for the family of four. Yeah. And they found plenty to do between the bay, the kill care, the uh, museum. Museum's pretty nice, museum. my kid volunteers here Fridays, but I mean, how, how nice is for, oh. not a big place, St. Albans Museum's got a great, and, great museum. And, uh, Friday, for the record, for folks watching us live, is it's last day of the season, I think. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah. I, I love, love happen stuff. to work on my French. I watch a fair, a fair amount really? of French-Canadian yeah, TV. You. And yeah. the surprising thing is they were talking about French-friendly uh, places to go and visit. And they mentioned, you know, Ottawa and, you know, Burlington and some other places. But they mentioned St. Albans. Every oh, time they mentioned right. French-friendly places, they mentioned St. No, Albans. Right? Interesting. And it's one of those things where... It's a, you know, they're mentioning towns that are, you know, 10 times larger than us yeah. and right. us. And it, we're Peaceful. in easy drive, you know, an hour and a half, two hours easily from Montreal, from a big suburbs. There's a fair number of millionaires in the Montreal area. It'd be nice to get yeah. some of their recreation dollars and vacation dollars spent here. And no doubt. certainly some of their tourism people are, are here already. And, Someone's well, hit the right button. I'd like to take credit for it, or I'm sure Tim would also, but I'm not sure we, they I did think it. Lisa Murray, the Franklin County uh, Regional Chamber of Commerce, they've had some, they've been trying to get some yeah. stuff going with folks across the border, I believe. Yeah, we've done the, we worked on the cross-border map where yeah. we did the regional map with St. John and Callensville, and, and right. we didn't go into Montreal, we didn't go into Burlington, we focus, where the focus right. is on the region. Yeah. And trying to get people to look at us as a region, not just yes. St. Albans. Right. And what what are you going to do in St. Albans for four days? Yeah. Well, you, we may not be able to entertain you for four days, but the region can entertain you for four days. Yeah. I would say I, one of my conversations on Main Street was I met a lady from Montreal who has a home on Maquam Shore or on the lake, and she was downtown walking with a friend from Toronto and a friend from yes. Ottawa. Hmm. And we could not say enough good things about the region and hmm. everything that's going on, and hmm. and that was that wasn't unique. I heard that, I heard that all the time. Yeah. Today, today we had I don't know if you drove, drove through town, but um, there was Norwich University brought a busload of students up, and hmm. they did a. Uh, it was all about uh, the St. Albans raid and the Revolutionary War, yeah, really. and the, and their I don't know if it was their teacher or guide, but he walked them throughout the town and the park and pointed out points of interest. And, oh, yeah. okay. and there had to have been, had to have been 25, 30 oh. students with them. So oh. I managed to introduce myself and yeah, that's great. thank them for coming. But that we're seeing more and more of that yeah. type of stuff. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Tim saw it. Ned, I'm sure you did. Montreal Gazette had a, had a great story on St. Albans, what, a year or two ago? If you oh, didn't wow. see that, I didn't see talk it. to the city manager. I'm sure he could quickly show okay. you that. But just uh, made a great story. He couldn't have... Uh, you know, couldn't have paid paid big buckos for someone oh. to have a nicer story about St. Albans. It's an easy just, ride from yeah. there. And, and just, to, yeah. just to augment that, I mean, uh, the last Vermont Life that was printed 
have a large article on St. Yeah, Albans. Downtown St. Albans, among others. If you haven't seen that, I have extra right. copies of that. And, you know, there was a piece in the same one about Hudax and yeah. the, the farm, the farm said. And so there was that. And then a month ago, we hosted a lady for, that was a um, freelance writer for um, AAA New England, the mm -hmm. journal. I think I saw it. Right. And so that'll be, you get a story from those folks at some point, for That should, should be. And she was more, oh. she was more impressed. Um, she was so impressed with the quality of food and all the restaurants. She ate at Bayside, yeah. she ate at uh, Jeff's, yeah. Twigs, uh, One Fed. Um, she was totally impressed with surrounding areas. The only, if there was an issue with her visit is her story can only be 350 words. So, no, is that right? Uh, but well, it, hopefully, it's, yeah, hopefully it's <laughs> enough. I think it's going to be enough to yeah. tweak the interest of a lot of people. Yeah. So. Of course, fall foliage season. Foliage seems to be a little slow, but it looks like it's moving. I was, I've been getting around. It looks like we're starting to get some decent trying color. Trying to get some color, yeah. Franklin County, again, obviously, uh, St. Albans is no stow when it comes to attracting fall foliage people, but the county certainly gets some. Have you got a I, sense of that I, now? It certainly I, I, gets well, some bump, huh? I prefer, I prefer Franklin County over the stow area, because the stow area, you have the mountains and you can see the mountains. But, but you, have a lot of, you have a lot of people. You have a lot of people. Sure. And, yeah. But if you're on the Bakersfield side or the yeah. St. Albans side yeah. of the mountains, yeah. you get to see the lake, you can see countryside, you can see right. the rolling countryside, and yeah. you know, and you can come and eat at one of our many fine restaurants. And yeah, of course, big weekend coming up, Columbus Day, Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, yeah we, uh, I was up in Enosburg on uh, Saturday. For, there were a few hours ago myself. But I, when I chose to come home by way of um, 108 oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and come through and... Um, Took a couple side routes. The foliage was just starting to yeah, come around, but coming. I, I tell you, that 108 and side roads up through there, Duffy yeah. Hill Road and uh, Pumpkin Village Road. I mean, you cannot find oh. Oh, yeah. better country roads than what I'll we give have you a couple, here. A couple of my favorite South Richford Road between Richford and, yeah. and, and Montgomery, Montgomery Village, yeah. Longley Bridge Road. I was biking along that, but the yeah. Pumpkin Village Road, and that is one of the most beautiful yeah. roads yeah. around. It's got. <laughs> good scenery yeah. in either direction. No, I would recommend also uh, north and south road in those areas. Just you get yeah. mountains on one side, yeah. rolling countryside yeah. on the other. Oh no, it's incredible. Yeah, and and again, if you want to get out and walk, plenty of good places to walk. I mean, just uh, the and, rail, the rail trail, great place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the most impressive vistas is coming down into Fairfield. Yeah. You, come, yeah. you go past the Cory, Cory home, and that there's that hillside of mountains off to the right. And when those are in full bloom, I don't. That's that's a tough view to beat. Yeah, yeah. no, it's pretty pretty impressive stuff. So. Yeah. Water Actually, waste well, water to get down to a more mundane subject. Anything to report, Mr. Mayor, on the water wastewater issue with the city and town? Oh, waiting for a decision on the court yeah. level. No one's. Will uh, this be? I mean, will this be? I mean, a significant. This. I mean, this may be a ma like a major decision. This were were passed like preliminaries, or is that? never totally clear to you. I, I believe we are. I think the so, decision so will be, be made yeah. whether the town yeah. was impacted by the affiliation, the affiliation fee or it's fee. not. Interesting. And yeah. um, however it plays out, you know, yeah. whoever it doesn't favor, I'm thinking would take the first step in the next direction. Yeah. Um, what that looks like, I don't know. But um, I was of the belief that there were meeting, um, there was going to be a uh, court date for the end of August, and it got moved to October. So, um, hmm. it should be something that comes down the the pike here. Yeah. Does, that, does that does that issue cross your desk much does, or not? It, thankfully, it does not cross <laughs> my desk. Well, what a, what a yeah. break! Huh? Oh yeah, that I'm I, that I've dodged that bullet. Thankfully. Yeah. Anyway, so we we may hear some news on that in the not too distant future. Yeah, perhaps. I would I would expect so. Sure. Um, city fire city police department staffing. Seems like when we last left that, we down a couple spots, well, I know, Tim? Or? I know uh, Bill Nyan and I had sat down and had coffee one day, and we talked about that, and Bill was very concerned about it because there was about six yeah. vacancies. Really? Right. Um, we lost a, a good officer in Ron Hogue going to, right. to Essex. I thought Ron did a wonderful job. Yeah. And, um, and so prior to... So Bill and I met, and then I just wanted to, I gave Chief a heads up. I said, this yeah. is going to be part of your conversation. They're yeah. concerned. And Chief said, no, we're now we're almost fully no, really. staffed, and we, they needed one more position. So since then, I don't know if it's transitioned. It can change quickly, but I don't, I don't think it has. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, we had done some different um, 
uh, structured as some different benefit package. So it was that we would pay uh, uh, the HSA, I don't know if it was the HSA or just an individual, but we would pay their deductible either way hmm. um, in hopes that that might attract some people because, um, as you know, healthcare is, is um, sometimes tough to control. And, and when you have that deductible, that can make an impact on, on uh, your wages significantly. Yeah. So it sounds like so the PD sounds like it's doing a little better. Yeah. So they did yeah. fill at least some of those positions. Yeah, I had a knock on my door in the in the city at my house in the city the other day. I won't mention his name, but a young guy who I know a little bit, good guy, but has an interest in a future with the city city PD. I wish him wish him well. It doesn't seem like there are a ton of people looking to be no. police officers, but geez, Tim, sounds like we could make that comment about a lot of jobs. I know you say right. with your with your day job just. Uh, Labor shortage is just uh, a huge, huge issue. Yeah, I think the companies are going to have to get creative. Yeah. You know, that's one of the discussions we're having. Um, you know, with Kathy Lavoy leaving the Workforce Investment oh, yeah. Board, uh, funding has been diminished. Wow. Um, timing on that is just, I just don't understand it. But um, mm. we need to do a better job of educating our high school graduates as to what career opportunities there are yeah. in the area. I don't, I think a lot of people are naive to that. What did I just hear on the news last night or the night before? Fuel truck drivers, just a shortage. I mean, it sounds like you can yeah. probably say that about any industry you want to pick maybe. Any truck driver, um, yeah, you know, right. some long haul truck drivers are making yeah. 80,000. Yeah. You know, in fact, I just, I've got a, yeah, one of my part-time jobs I'm dealing with, a, yeah, a driver of an 18 wheeler and just gave him a clip from the oil patch, I think Midland, Texas. Even six, even six figures for really? truck drivers yeah. and stuff. They're yeah. just yeah, desperately they, trying to get truck drivers. They were quoting some for that uh, fuel oil thing. They were, I yeah. think it was twenty three dollars an hour to yeah, start. Yeah, I heard that. That doesn't that sound was, like a bad wage. That's not no. for for someone that's yeah. twenty one and you know has yeah. those things lined up. That's yeah. a pretty good start. Yeah, yeah. with no debt or yeah. very little debt. Yeah. Boy, but just a huge issue. How, yeah. With municipal government, are you you doing okay? Of course, we're talking about. Public Works uh, director, but you filling? I mean, city and town are pretty much up to speed in terms of positions. Is it harder to find it, jobs for municipal jobs? It depends, jobs and it, it fluctuates, and it yeah. depends on the seasonality and who's leaving and why and yeah. how and stuff like that. But yeah. we're pretty much up to speed. Yeah. I think both communities have strong teams in place. Yeah. I, I know what's I know City Hall with Marty and Chip and Dominic and yeah. Kristen and. Um, you know, uh, when Alan was, I, I just think it was strong. And then with the town, mm. with uh, Ned, Alan, Carrie, Jen, um, Becky, um, Anna, I mean, I, there's some longevity there. There's people that live in the community that are committed to both city and town. Yeah. Um, so I think we're fortunate from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, this might affect both your job as mayor and Franklin County Industrial Development Corp. I guess I was thinking that the Amtrak situation had been resolved, but I got my oh. copy of Vermont Business Magazine today with an Amtrak story saying with the, whatever the safety control thing that Vermont yep. doesn't have, and I guess January 1st is the, I'm glad I've got a trip to D.C. in November. I'm taking the train back <laughs> from D.C. I'm glad I'll get at least one more trip on the Vermonter, but that's still uh, Yeah, I thought, I thought we were exempt from that I thought, I guess uh, at I, one point, I and I heard then too. it uh, reared its head again. Really? Um, huh. I thought we were making, and I, I know we were making some headway getting into Montreal sounds again. Like, it sounds like slow progress um, anyway. But the safety huh. piece could derail that. No, no pun intended, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I got stopped by Amtrak crossing in front of me on Lake Street just the other night, oh, and yeah. there were a fair number of people coming off on the, the train. North, on the northbound on train. On the northbound train, yeah. yeah. This is about 9.30, 9.15. Yeah. And it was, that was more than just locals yeah. riding yeah. back from someplace else. Yeah. There's a gentleman who I met uh, recently who has a uh, B2B or a, maybe a, I mean, he might even call it a bed and breakfast, but um, yeah. He, he says that's one of our uh, greatest assets is a, is a train. Oh. He, he's got people that come into St. Albans and just walk up. Mm -hmm. he, he's got a place on Main Street. They just walk up from the, excuse me, from the train yard. And he said um, a lot of his clients just come up for the weekend or the yeah. day. Or, yeah, no, of course, St. Albans, obviously the, the northern terminus of the uh, Vermonter. But, yeah. yeah, I hope I'm around long enough, and I hope they keep making some progress. I mean, and 
close to I'm about a 10 minute walk from the train station. Yeah. I look forward to the days, I've been looking forward to years to be able to walk to the train station, get on the train and get up to Montreal and be yeah. deposited yeah. in downtown, but we'll, we'll see if I, we One it. of my fond memories of growing up in 76 when the Olympics were in Montreal. Oh wow, which I caught myself. I was yeah. just, 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 just got into town the summer before. Really, uh, Tom Walsh Sr. Uh, oh. was the ticket Oh yeah. Master, I guess, at, wow. for Amtrak, and he took uh, a number of his kids and neighborhood kids up, and we went to, we hung out and uh, we watched the uh, Olympic marathon. Wow! Saw Dwight, uh, Dwight uh, Stone, who was a high huh. jumper back then. But it was, you know, we rode up and back, and it was, wow. it was a great time. Yeah, I hope I hope that happens. Well, boy, so Amtrak, I guess, is more of an issue than I thought. Yeah. What about bu bus service, Tim? St. Albans used to. Does that issue ever come up? Any any conceivable I've, hope to get, you know, Greyhound or whoever it is to pull into St. Albans again? You know, that's a discussion that I've had with one constituent yeah. uh, trying to get a bus service back up here. Yeah. I haven't had uh, time to sort of research yeah. that or try to figure out how that goes, how you how you get to that point. Yeah. But that is something. Um, so as the council, we're trying to establish a goals and strategies meeting, and that would be one that I bring up is how do we, how can we entice Greyhound or Megabus or one of them to, yeah. to sort of come half hour north from Burlington. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we just finished our uh, town plan, and oh, one yeah, of their goals in there is to get public transit more right? more established in the area, but also to get interstate public transit. And huh. right now it goes up as far as, I forget if it's uh, Chimney Corners or where, but it gets closed. Oh yeah. But, and they're, they're amenable to coming up a little farther, but they want a place to, you know, have a ticket stand, have a person, have a and they shelter. being, and who are you talking about specifically? I, I I'm not at liberty to say, but oh, I would okay. I would assume a Greyhound style company okay. to come in, really, yeah. and have you know interstate bus service. Yeah. It'd be great to coordinate that with our friends on the New York side, so that yeah. we could have some sort of a yeah. a loop either one way or the other way or both ways, and have some yeah. you know cross pollination. But it's it's a it's a tough thing. So like just like Amtrak, unless you're yeah. connecting. Yeah. To Montreal or connecting from Montreal, it's hard to get them to to stop and take you somewhat seriously. Right, rec path that came up briefly earlier. Again, the rec path that again voters defeated a while back. Uh, at least trying to get the path up to Collins Pearly. Is that is that it's, still alive? It's still alive. It's not a a full path from one end to the other end. No. It's mainly just a specific crossing of the uh, sash at this point. Yeah. Just to get across, we're hoping that that's sort of the. Um, impetus and the pollination and the seed to branch out from there. But it's in terms of our, our looking at it is the there's a certain number of the sash is a limited access highway. So you're not supposed to no pedestrians are supposed to be along it. Yeah. We all know that there are a fair number of pedestrians that use it. And and I have to admit I am one of those pedestrians. I ride my bike, I live up on the, the in the Bay Area. Yeah. And I cut across the sash. I ride up uh, Thorpe Avenue extension, um, ride across and go up through Thorpe Avenue. We won't, we won't and, tell anybody you're doing well, that. Well, I, I have to say, in, in going through there, I've been through there a couple of weeks ago on a later in the night than I'd like to be, yeah. and I saw people out there. Okay, and, right. and I've been out there in October, November, yeah. and there's people out there. And certainly yeah. the fence on either end, either side of the sash has been, <laughs> has been crushed down. But and. I have to say, it's been crushed down but repaired in a manner that somebody with real fencing tools has done it. It's not just some yeah. teenage yahoos yeah. are doing it. It's a, a dad or a mom going in there and cutting the fence and reinforcing it so the fence doesn't come you know, completely apart. And also, at the bottom of the drainage ditches, at least last fall, uh, there were two little, little bridge. there were little bridges <laughs> on both sides yeah. that quickly disappeared before yeah. the snow came, but it's... It's not your average couple of yahoos out there cutting through. It's moms and dads who are, and it's, but it's, well, we, I, need, I, I, we need to have it as a, a safe, well-lit, yeah. prepared surface so that people can get through and make it through safely. Yeah. And so that the traffic is notified that there are pedestrians crossing at this one single point. And also, I've noticed that some of the BFA teams, when they go over to work out at uh at Collins Pearly, either run there or do loops from there, and end mm. up kids end up on the sash, and it'd be great right. to have them be able you be able to tell them no, yeah. please go this route. I think the ironic yeah. piece of that also is the fact that 
I mean, the, the sash is somewhat enticing because you've got a six foot shoulder on yeah. both sides and you can be removed from the traffic. Yeah. You would feel much safer going on that road than you would Fairfax Street. Oh, I, I, mean, I, I agree. You know, Fairfax I agree. Street, I agree. If, you're, if you're trying to direct people to get to the complex by going yeah. up Fair, Fairfax is yeah. no shoulder, yeah. Yeah. narrow to begin with. Yeah. You know, when I was in high school, we used to run that, and it was almost deserted. Yeah, yeah. But now it's a it's a throughway. Yeah. I say that in the sense yeah. that people are yeah. connecting yeah, to right. different points. Yeah. Our, our um, long range plans that are yeah. very much up in the air is we'd like to have a, a crossing. Up, a, you know, get rid of the little bridge that's across the. Um, I forget. I guess that's Stevens Brook up there yeah. Yeah. from Thorpe, cross onto Grice Brook. Have a you know a real a permanent ADA accessible structure across the brook, mm -hmm. but also go down in through the uh, cemetery. And we've, when we've had some talks with them and they seem amenable to going down there. We just need to get all the little nuts and bolts put together and the funding put together to get this all done so that yeah. it's ADA accessible, well laid out and well planned. But it's, it's something that's, that's another one of those amenities that once we have it, it's going to make the community better and stronger and more competitive with our economic, uh, our com our economic competitors throughout the region and throughout the, the country. Speaking of ADA accessible, or in this case, or, or lack thereof, uh, the town hall still hang hanging in with the town hall? Still hanging in? Uh, well, we're, yes, we're hanging in. The, the one problem we have at town hall is you cannot have the coffee maker, the microwave, and the air conditioner that's in the window on at the same time because we blow a fuse. Do, do you so so yeah. there's a sign at the end, air conditioning season is over, but there's been any number of times where you're sitting, I, my computer's on the fuse, that really? stay, and you sit there and then blink, and it's gone. It's like, right. <laughs> you know, you, and I say like, several bad like words, problem. and, you know, you run out to the hallway and you flip the breaker and you come back, and, really? you know, but it's, it, it, town hall is a great historic building. Yeah. It's just reached the end of its re, reasonable, useful lifespan yeah. as a town hall. We will in the future. And you, are, and you are moving. I mean, so we're, you, you think a different site is definitely. I, the I think way it's to go. in the, it's it's a different site is the way to go. Yes, yeah. just because rebuilding it in place or building a new place end up being the same yeah. and nearly the same pr price. However. Yeah rebuilding it in place, we don't end up with a large enough meeting room. We don't end up with a whole bunch of other things that we need and, and we're sti we don't have parking. We don't have a whole bunch of other things. And it's just in terms of the community, it's not a geographically centrally located sort of a thing. Right. That issue's not, that's not on the ballot in March. No, it is not. Uh, it, possibly that, that, later in the year? Or? I th no, I would say that's later in that the, right? our, our lifetimes. Is it's, that right? It's, it's ways down the road. several years away, I would say, because right. we need to plan it out you know, first of all, replenish the uh, the uh, infrastructure program grants and program yeah. funds, refill the LOT funds, refill other things. So we, it's something that we need to yeah. look at and study. And I mean, certainly it's in the offing. Certainly we're kicking it around. Certainly we have numbers and have ideas and the in, and infrastructure committee has been working and picking out places and going through the, the stuff. But yeah. the real priority came down to the DPW over the town hall. Other people disagreed, but really the DPW is right. the criti more critical thing. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like we need to find some more things for you to be working. I just don't think there's too much going well, on in the I, town for you I, at this point. I, I, well, my, my list has gone from 45 <laughs> different projects to down to only into the mid 30 so it's not as bad as it used to be. But there's, it's it's a fair amount of juggling to keep that number of like balls. And Tim, I'll give you the last. We're good down to about a minute or so. Anything you want to quickly mention, uh, wrap up that we haven't jumped into? Um, you know, I'd like to push the, the uh, run for the lake. I think yeah, that's huge. Coming up Sunday. For, yeah, coming up Sunday. I think that's huge. How long is that? Uh, you can do a 5 or 10K run and a 3K walk, okay. all from Georgia Beach. Uh, we just decided today on the next step for the mayor's photo competition, we're okay. going to have a reception at City Hall on November 3rd to right, auction off. Taking note of that, St. Albans Co-op's 100th, 100th yeah, year right. in business. So there'll be the painted milk cans that people will start seeing around town. And those will be silent auctioned off, and then my photos that were in the park will be uh, great, live great auctioned. Photos. Yep. Very good. On that note, we're going to call it uh, call it a day. Thanks to St. Albans Mayor Tim Smith. Thank you, Richard. And Ned Connell. Ned, good to have you back on. Hope to see you again. The St. Albans Towns, uh, St. Albans Town Director of Administration what? with many hats. Thanks, folks, for Thank you, jumping on. Thanks Thank to you. Zach for doing all the hard work out there. Thanks for watching us on.
Northwest Access TV, and our next show will be the, the Wednesday night after election night. should have plenty to talk about then. That would be Wednesday, November 7th. Anyway, and early voting is underway. Thanks for watching. I'm Richard Carberthwaite. So long. See ya. Have fun.